what does digital data, seven-dimensional cubes, and my bootleg homemade version of the Squid Game have in common? Well, more than you might think. In this video, you will become a character in the story of the Calamari Carnival, a collection of high-stakes games with interesting math. Also, you don't need any mathematical background to enjoy this, just a bit of common sense and a few minutes of your time. Enjoy! The longest night of your life begins in darkness. Slowly, you open your eyes, and you find yourself in an unfamiliar room. What is this place? How did you get here? The last thing you remember is dozing off in math class. You notice there's two other people in here. You recognize them as your classmates. Hey, you! You're finally awake! Buddy, are you feeling okay? Before you can answer him, you hear a voice from a speaker. Ah, it seems the three of you are away. Welcome to the Calamari Carnival. The three of you will be playing the three coins game. This game involves three rooms. The three of you are inside room one. Inside room two, I have three coins and a cup. These coins are fair. Each of them has 50-50 odds of coming up with heads or tails. After I turn off the monitor, I will flip the three coins and I will not touch them anymore. I will not change their positions. Then we will play three rounds. In each round, I will call one of you to come inside room two. In room two, you will see a cup covering one of the coins and two other coins uncovered. Your task is to guess the result of the coin toss inside the cup. You may answer with heads, tails, or you may pass. Passing means you don't guess. After that, you leave and enter room 3. You may not leave any clues behind. I'm watching you, mortals. Between rounds, I will move the cup to cover a different coin. Because each of you will have to guess the result for a different coin. Then the next round can begin. Abel has to guess the coin on the left. You have to guess the coin in the middle. And Tam has to guess the coin on the right. The game ends after all three people have made their guesses and enter room 3. There, I will announce the results of the game. If everybody passes, all of you lose. The three of you will be disposed of. If at least one person guesses wrong, all of you also lose. If everybody who guesses gets it right, all of you win and you earn the right to escape. That means you can win with 3 right guesses, 2 right guesses and 1 pass, or 1 right guess and 2 passes. I'm going to give you about 5 minutes to think of a strategy. Why don't you guys just let me guess? I've always been lucky. Well, that's a simple solution, with a 50% chance of success. But I think the mastermind might want a more interesting solution. I feel we can do better than 50%. Oh, okay. But I do know that at least someone has to guess, because if no one guesses, then we automatically lose. Yes. And we should try to avoid guessing more than once as a group. If two people guess, our chance is only 25%. 
because the two people guessing, both of them have to get it right. It's even worse if three people guess. Basically, we try to avoid overlapping guesses, alright? I know it sounds stupid, but it would be nice if when someone gets it wrong, everyone gets it wrong together, so we don't blame each other if we lose. Agreed, that does sound more efficient. Also, I want to remind you that we have no way to communicate in the game, so we must use the two uncovered coins as cues for guessing. What do you mean? Basically, we need a strategy that makes sure at least one of us makes a guess, but minimizes overlap between the guesses. So, we use the coins as cues. Each of us only makes a guess when looking at a certain combination of the two uncovered coins. For instance, we can guess when we see the two coins showing the same side, or we can guess when we see the two coins showing different side. Buddy, what do you think? Do you think we should guess when seeing the same sides? Or should we guess when seeing different sides? We should guess when seeing the same side, because if we guess when seeing different sides, there will be six cases where more than one people guess. For instance, in the case heads, tails, heads, me and champ will both make a guess. We will overlap in that case. If we guess when seeing the same sides, we will see only two cases of overlap. Heads, 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 and tails, tails, tails. But didn't you say overlapping three guesses is bad? It is, but I think there's a way to fix that with your idea. Uh, which idea again? Remember when you said we should try to lose together? If all of us see two coins showing heads, which side should we guess in order to lose together? Heads or tails? Uh, it's tails, right? Because if the three of us see two heads, that means the correct combination is heads, heads, heads. So the correct guess is heads. But if we want to lose together, to get it wrong together, we guess the opposite, which is tails. Precisely. Basically, we're throwing away our chance to win the heads, heads, heads combination. But by following the rule of Guessing tails if we see two heads, we guarantee winning in these three other cases. Heads, heads, tails, heads, tails, heads, and tails, heads, heads. That means we have three out of four odds, 75%. Similarly, we should guess heads when we see the coins showing tails and tails. That way we have the complete strategy right here. The basic rule is, if you see two coins showing the same face, you should guess the opposite face. 75%? That's a bit better than 50%, I guess. Yeah, I'm not sure if this is the best strategy, but we don't have much time left. I think we should just stick with this and pray for the best. Hello, this is Ruby. I'm here to show you that this is the best possible strategy. First, we need a way to more efficiently represent the faces of each coin. Let us represent heads with the number 1 and tails with the number 0. For example, heads, heads, tails will be represented by the sequence 1, 1, 0. Now, take a look at this cube graph. We can associate each point on a cube graph with a sequence of 1s and zeros. That means each point represents a possible combination of coins. Two points on this graph are connected by an edge if and only if their sequences differ on only one digit. For example, 010 and 011 is connected because they differ only on the third digit. We can also think about how far one point is from another point, some sort of distance between points. We call how many steps it takes to get from one point to another the Hamming distance. For instance, 000 and 111 differ on all three of their digits. So we need three steps to go from one to the other. So they have distance three. 
Remember how the strategy works. The core idea of the plan is to intentionally lose together when the coin combinations are tails, 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 or heads, heads, heads. In this cube, those two are represented as 0, 0, 0 and 1, 1, 1. We call those two sequences code words. Using sequences and code words, we can rephrase the rule of the strategy into this. If you see that you can guess a number that makes the sequence a code word, guess the opposite number. For instance, if you see 1 and 1 with the middle number unknown, if you guess 1, you will make the sequence a code word 111. So you should guess the opposite number, which is 0. What is the role of code words? Well, each code word has neighbors, points with distance 1 from that code. For instance, the code word 000 has three neighbors, 100, 010, and 001. Together, the four points create a sphere with radius 1. 000 is called the center of the sphere. With our strategy, there are two things that can happen on a sphere. If the correct sequence is the code word, the three players guess wrong, and you lose. If the correct sequence is any of the three other points, one of the players will guess right, the other two players pass, and you win. In a sense, we have connected the loss on the code word with three wins on the three neighbors. Remember, no strategy can possibly be perfect. Every strategy will always have a loss on some point. These spheres are just a way to associate each loss with the greatest amount of wins possible, which is the number of neighbors of any point, which is 3. How do we arrange code words? Remember, we want a strategy that maximizes wins and minimizes losses. We want as few code words as possible, covering as many points as possible. Intuitively, we don't want the spheres to overlap. One way to make sure that the spheres don't overlap is to set a minimum distance between code words. Notice that if two code words have distance 2, that means there is a third point with distance 1 from both of them, a mutual neighbor, which means there is overlap. But if the two code words have distance 3, that means there cannot be a mutual neighbor which means there cannot be overlap between the spheres. So we should set the minimum distance to 3. That is why 000 and 111 are a good pair of code words. Because those two code words have distance 3 from each other. Their spheres do not overlap. We can see that this is one of the best ways to cover the cube with two spheres. Strangely, if the game had more players, the odds of survival can increase, because there are ways to cover higher dimensional cubes with higher dimensional spheres. For instance, in 7 dimensions, each code word has 7 neighbors, because there are 7 digits to change, which means each code word covers 7 other points. And by picking the code words with no overlap on their spheres, you can have 7 out of 8 odds of survival. The field of math that studies ways to find and design codes, which are sets of code words, is called coding theory. It is very useful because we can treat the sequence of ones and zeros like bits on a computer. So these codes can be developed to find ways to store and transmit data. Code words can be used to compress data or to find ways to fix errors in data. This particular technique of using spheres to cover cubes is called the Hamming code. Although it is relatively outdated, I still think it is an interesting and important example to know. If you want to learn more about Hamming codes, you can check out 3Blue1Brown's video on it here, and my Summer of Math Exposition entry from last year for an interactive minigame. Anyway, back to our Calamary Carnival story. So you walk in, see the left coin showing heads, the middle one covered, and the last one showing tails. You're thankful, since now you can be sure that you are going to win. You can be sure that this is one of two possible winning configurations. Heads, heads, tails, or heads, tails, tails. 
Your job is to just pass and wait for the guaranteed win. At that point in time, your chance of winning has become 100%. You quickly pass and enter the next room. What did you see in the room, by the way? Oh, thank god, that means we won. I saw Tails and Tails, that means I had to guess heads, but knowing it was Tails Tails when I made the guess, that means there's a 50% chance of it being actually Tails Tails Tails. There was a 50% chance of me being wrong. Funny, huh? How as a group, our chance is 75%, but individually, the guesser still has a 50% chance. We did it, bros! We won! With the power of math, teamwork, and a little bit of luck, the three of you managed to survive the three coins game. I'm Ruby, and this has been my three coins game video. If you enjoyed it, please like and subscribe. I plan to make more stuff like this in the future. More interesting and entertaining math content focusing around pop culture in both English and Indonesian. Your likes and subscribes will help me out a ton. Thank you.